Well, greetings all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and welcome to a new week of Brian's Bible Break as, it, as we unpack verses from God's Word and reflect on them. Well, the next couple of weeks we're going to uh, look at um, the Jesus' I Am statements in the Gospel of John. But I thought we'd begin by considering the significance of using that phrase, I am, because it is a phrase uh, reserved for God, and, uh, and it occurs in a couple of places in the Old Testament uh, specifically, but we're going to look at Exodus chapter 3, verse 14 from the New Living Translation. But let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this glorious day. Lord, we thank you for welcoming us into your holy presence to pause and to reflect on your word. We pray, O oh God, that you would speak a word of encouragement into our hearts and our lives as we seek to walk humbly with you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. So Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. God replied to Moses, I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel. I am has sent me to you. This is that scene where Moses encounters God in the burning bush that's not being consumed. And God has called Moses to go and, and um, present himself uh, to Pharaoh and to request that God's people Israel be set free. That God has heard the cries of the people and he is preparing to lead them into the promised land. And of course, Moses doesn't uh, think that he's the right person, that he's worthy of such a calling. And as we uh, talked about last week, he comes up with all kinds of reasons why he shouldn't be the one to go. <clears throat> and he says in the previous verse, "What what should I, uh, what should I tell them? When I go to the people of Israel, how am I supposed to convince them that you, O oh God, are the one who is uh, leading this initiative?" And God says to Moses, "I am who I am. I am is." The name for God. It is the name reserved for God. It is uh, in the in the Hebrew language um, pronounced Yahweh or Yahweh. It's it's it is absent of vowels, and it is actually pronounced. And I don't do a very good job of it, but I'm not Jewish. Um, but but Jewish people would pronounce it, and it would sound like a breath. Uh, rather than a, rather than an actual word, um, spelt Y H, W Y H, um, Y. And it is, it is that that, um, that, acknowledgement, of, the supreme and sovereign Lord of all creation, God of all creation. And it was considered blasphemy to, to associate yourself with God, to use language that would imply that you were, in fact, God. And so Jesus, in the Gospel of John, uses seven I am statements and of course, this uh, creates problems for him because the religious leaders associated though his use of I am statements as claiming to be God. And of course, Jesus was God, the Son, um, fully divine yet fully human. But they didn't know that. And so they viewed his, his claims as being blasphemous because he was claiming by the use of that language to be God. 
when when God tells Moses to tell the people, I am who I am. I am has sent me to you. That is a powerful statement. That is saying to the people of Israel, I am not here on my own authority. I'm not here on my own initiative. The God of all creation, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God that we worship has sent me to you. And when when Moses makes this claim, it holds weight. It, there's power in the name. And so God knows that the only way the people will listen to Moses, because what Moses is going to propose is preposterous, really, because nobody goes up against Pharaoh. Nobody demands anything of Pharaoh. And of course, they're, they're concerned that, that if Moses goes and causes problems for the people, the, the Egyptians are just going to make life even more miserable for them. And of course, that, that does happen a little bit. But ultimately, Yahweh, I am. It will lead the people Israel out of Egypt across the Red Sea on dry ground and into the promised land or at least that was the original plan it took 40 years for that plan to be realized but that wasn't God's fault that was the people's fault the reality is I am was true to his promise, true to his promise to Moses, true to his promise to the people. And so the good news for us, friends, is we can access this same God, this same I am, through prayer, through his word, through seeking him with our whole heart. The same God that led his people out of slavery in Egypt to the promised land is the same God who can lead us in the way we should go. And he's promised to do that. And so, friends, I encourage you this day as you go about your day, seek the Lord with your whole heart. Ask him to help you with whatever it is you're facing. And know that as, you, as we surrender ourselves to him and his will being done, he is faithful to lead us successfully in the way we should go. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this glorious day, Lord. And we're so grateful that you are the God who comes in close and meets us where we are, who is true to his promises, is faithful every day to lead us in the way we should go. And so, Lord, we surrender ourselves to you, that your will be done. Lord, would you use us as instruments of your grace, of your mercy, of your compassion, your kindness, your love, as we engage and interact with people, as we seek to walk humbly with you. Lord, guide us and uphold us with your mighty and outstretched hand. Place your hand of favor upon us and your hedge of protection around us as we seek you with our whole heart. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Well, friends, thanks for joining me this morning for this short reflection on God's Word. I hope that it has been an encouragement to you. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow as we unpack another verse from God's Holy Scriptures. Friends, go in peace. The Lord bless you and keep you this day and always. Amen. See you tomorrow, friends.